Good afternoon, everyone. If you're on the East Coast, good afternoon. Welcome to the Dispir Distilled Spirits Council um, of the United States Ask the Experts webinar series. I'm Amy Carter. I'm the Vice President of Member Services and Business Development here at Discus. Um, the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States, also known as Discus. I uh, just want to let everyone know that we are recording this webinar, um, so it will be available later on the Discus, on the public Discus YouTube channel. Um, and then before I welcome our speakers and before we dive into today's um, webinar, I just want to read the Discus antitrust policy statement that, that's on your screen, hopefully. Um, we should all be mindful um, of our policy and refrain from discussing and exchanging any information relating to pricing, uh, marketing, or sales plans. Uh, don't discuss any costs or confidential plans regarding output or production. Um, we should not be talking about boycotting another company or recruiting or hiring um, each other's employees. Uh, don't discuss salaries, wages, or benefits. Or And also, we should not be discussing any sensi uh, competitively sensitive or proprietary information. Um, so with that bit of housekeeping, uh, we will you know, start our, our webinar here. Um, so as, if you're not aware uh, about Discus, we are the leading voice and advocate for our members, but also for the overall uh, distilled spirits and industry. Um, we also provide a wealth of education resources and data, um, including this webinar, but we also have data on uh, state laws and regulations, uh, best practices for operations in the industry. Uh, we have some. We have a really great Discus Academy that provides um, sort of a, a, the different other side of business operations. Um, anyway, we try to educate and share relevant um, trends, ideas, resources, discussions, opportunities, best practices throughout Discus and particularly this uh, this website, I'm sorry, this webinar. Um, our recent Ask the Expert webinar series have included uh, e-commerce featuring Reserve Bar, um, consumer foot traffic for 2024 with Placer AI. We had a webinar on sustainable closures that featured our one of our partner members, Talis. Um, we've talked about global regulatory compliance. Uh, we've talked about the alcohol buying trends of the socially conscious consumers with Women of the Vine and Spirits, another one of our partners. All these recordings and more are available on the Discus YouTube channel. Um, but, but today, we are going to be focusing on spirits competitions, and particularly the spirits competitions of the Tasting Alliance, which has been a pioneer in beverage competition for, I think, 40 years, or maybe a little bit more than 40 years, I think at least 40 years. Um, and so I think founders, brands, consumers, anyone is going to be interested in this conversation. Uh, so I want to welcome our speakers today. We've got Amanda Blue, who is the president of the Tasting Alliance. Uh, we've got Toby Blue, who's chairman and taste chairman of the Tasting Alliance Advisors and chairman of the Tasting Alliance, and Maddie McDowell, who is Executive Vice President at the Tasting Alliance. So welcome, Amanda, Toby, and Maddie. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Thank you for so, having us. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm glad you guys made the time for us. Um, so, you know, Discus is, a, is, I mean, as the Tasting Alliance knows, we're, we're a proud partner with the Tasting Alliance to provide benefits um, not only to Discus members, but also to Tasting Alliance winners. There's various kinds of benefits that include expertise and post-competition, I think pre-competition and post-competition support. Um, but I just want to highlight two benefits because it relates to um, upcoming registrations. So, and, and, and upcoming Tasting Alliance competitions. So Tasting Alliance winners, award winners, receive a 10% discount on Discus um, memberships. So keep that in mind. And then Discus Craft members receive a 10% discounted entry into all Tasting Alliance uh, competitions. We can talk a little bit more about that later if people have questions, um, or you can reach out to, to Discus um, or to the Tasting Alliance if, you, if you'd like to learn more. Um, but for now, today, our um, we'll have a conversation for about 20, 25 minutes, and um, then we'll open the floor to questions. But I do want to say, feel free to ask questions at any time throughout the webinar. Um, you can use the raise your hand signal or icon at the top of your screen or put a question in the chat. And um, one of us will be able to uh, find the, find your question and, and read it out. So with that, I think we've got a good number of folks into the um, 
into the webinar and so we'll get started. Um, and so I just want to say, you know, I think Amanda, Toby, uh, Maddie, you've got some slides to share with participants. So we'll go through those. And I think you're going to maybe start with hopefully exactly what is the tasting alliance <laughs> and then tell us a bit about competitions, benefits of competitions and, and sort of what brands and consumers think can get out of um, participating in a competition. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the Tasting Alliance was started by my father, Anthony Dias Blue, who was the wine and spirits editor for Bon Appetit for many years. Uh, he started it as a wine competition. He was a preeminent wine critic uh, in the uh, domestic and international space. Um, he was also the editor for the, Z the Zagat Guide for San Francisco. Uh, we lived in San Francisco, and he started the San Francisco Wine Competition in 1980. So it is one of the oldest uh, and largest in the world. Uh, he started the um, spirits competition in 2000 when spirits were sort of beginning to change and evolve from just, uh, you know, they be they were becoming part of the cocktail scene and and it was the the profile of spirits was really being elevated and he saw a need in the market to evaluate you know what was the best of the best so uh he started that in 2000 and so we have just had our 24th year we had uh around 5500 entries this year in our San Francisco competition but we also have uh several other competitions uh we have our New York competition which is coming up on September 10th and 11th um, which is an amazing uh, different kind of competition. Uh, it's a more creative competition. It's a, more, a little bit more edgy. Um, craft brands really get a, a big uh, spotlight in that competition because the, the, the playing ground is a little bit smaller. Um, we also have, uh, we're just starting a Berlin satellite competition, which will take place after Bar Convent Berlin. Um, and will be essentially a way for European entries to get into the San Francisco competition without having to pay uh, for massive shipping fees to get their product tasted. So we will be having some of our San Francisco judges come out to Bar Conference Berlin and some local judges as well, and they will taste through European products so that they will get the same uh, level of expertise and judging that our normal competitions get. We also are starting a competition in Guadalajara in order to uh, highlight uh, the spirits of Latin America, um, which are obviously burgeoning in, in the U.S. as a, a major spirit category, agave spirits especially. Um, we have our Singapore World Spirits Competition, which is happening next week in Singapore, which sort of covers the Australasia uh, territories. Um, and then, of course, we have San Francisco, which is our crown jewel and um is uh the largest competition in the world and just named by forbes the biggest uh whiskey competition in the world as well not just the largest competition but the biggest whiskey competition which is really awesome as that is obviously a very popular category um so i will hand it over to maddie to tell uh, a little bit about the logistics of how our competitions are run i know a lot of people have Con con questions about, okay, so we send in a product, what happens next? So Maddie will sort of run A through Z about what happens next, and then we can go to what happens after the competition. Before, before Maddie, before you, before you take over, um, Amanda, can you, mm -hmm. um, or, or Maddie, someone say, what's the um, deadline? Or are there upcoming deadlines that people need to be aware of? There are. Maddie? Absolutely. So unfortunately for our Singapore competition, the deadline has passed for entry at this point. However, for our New York competition, which as Amanda mentioned, is taking place September 10th and the 11th, the deadline is not until the end of August. So you have plenty of time to, to get everything in order in order to enter the competition. Shipping information is actually being sent out this week. Um, and again, if there are any questions, Amy has provided our contact information on one of the first few slides, so please do not hesitate to reach out to us um, regarding entry deadline or shipping deadlines. Now I'll go into a little bit about our tasting process. We have over a hundred different categories in our San Francisco World Spirits competition. Those categories are determined based off of industry, industry trends, um, entrant requests, judges requests. Once we get all of those products in our warehouse, they are then processed based off of class code and subclass. 
from there, we kind of start our flighting process. We have over 60 judges from around the world, um, writers, buyers, retailers, distributors, importers that all come together to judge these products. Our judging panels are comprised of three to four judges. We try to break up um, our panels. We don't want two writers on a panel or two retailers on a panel to kind of give a variety of palettes on each judging panel. Once the judges sit down, they'll begin their tastings and we'll usually start, for instance, let's say vodka. We'll have six vodkas in a flight. They'll be flighted in order of subcategory. So let's say grape vodkas or potato vodkas. There will be six potato vodkas put in front of these judges on this panel. The only information provided to those judges is the alcohol percentage and the base. So we'll tell them this is a great vodka and it is 40%. We flight those usually based off of alcohol percentage or any other pertinent information. For instance, once we get to flavored vodka, we will disclose the flavor of the vodka in order for the judges to do their due diligence and to say, hey, you know, this does taste like a raspberry vodka. We have four different medals that can be given out based off of the product. All of these on the first two days of tasting are judged solely on their own merit. So glass A and glass B are not judged against each other on day one and day two of tasting. From there, each judge gives their individual medal, whether it's a bronze, a silver, or gold, or no medal. If all of the judges on that panel give glass A a gold, it then receives a double gold and it will advance to another round of tasting, which we call sweepstakes. On the final round of tasting, and they also provide a point score. This year we provided point scores for gold and double gold only. During sweepstakes, judges will taste anywhere from 100 to 180 products. Um, and this is when they do kind of determine if glass A is better than glass B to decide which one is best of class or best in show. This is a, it's a very um, well-oiled machine. Again, some of these products, once they are given a double gold, we do have a, a select panel retaste to determine who is going to actually advance to sweepstakes at that point. And as Amanda mentioned, specifically for our satellite competition in Berlin, we are going to fly out judges from San Francisco and we will have, have European judges. All of the double golds awarded at that competition will then be flown to San Francisco to advance to sweepstakes. Once that's done, we tally all of the votes and then the following week we send out results to entrance, which is where I will pass it over to Toby Blue who can provide you more insight into our post-competition support and the newly introduced Tasting Alliance Advisors. Thanks, Maddie. Um, so uh, the Tasting Alliance established what we are calling the Tasting Alliance Advisors last year. Um, and ostensibly the, the point of it is we, we recognize that we were sitting sort of at the intersection of newer emerging brands, um, and a network um, that could be leveraged to help those brands grow. Um, a lot of companies are coming in. Um, this is one of their first experiences. They win a medal. They don't, they're not sure what to do with it. And there's a whole storytelling apparatus um, that we can be very helpful in helping to shape their identity and how they move forward. Um, so we have assembled a um, a group of a roster of different marketing agencies from communications to branding to hiring to activations and everything in between. Um, and it has been very, very successful thus far, whereby um, brands are coming to us. They're speaking to us about their needs. We have an intake form uh, that they can fill out. Um, and based on that, uh, we analyze it and then what happens is the um, the roster we we share it with with whom we feel we curate a, a few of the 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 people on the roster and we introduce the brands to those people on those companies um, and again it's been very successful and um, we welcome anybody to um, reach out to us uh, to learn more it comes at no cost to the brands um, so this is something that we feel is an opportunity for us to give back um, to the community. Um, and um, as far as activations go, um, Amanda Herbert, um, I wanted to hand it off to you to describe some of the activations that are occurring as a result of the Tasting Alliance. 
Yeah, absolutely. So so one of the biggest things, as everyone's mentioned, post-competition support is, is a big thing. Obviously, we we value um, our brands and, and their, their commitment into um, our competitions. So a few different areas um, that we like to touch on alongside the Tasting Alliance advisors, um, we have five five additional areas that we provide all of our award-winning brands. First one, general marketing opportunities on our website. So we have various digital and email marketing opportunities across the Tasting Alliance platforms, whether that's in our monthly email newsletter. We also have social media posts going out daily. We have cocktail features as well as behind the brand features. Um, we also value our partnerships with our e-commerce um, partners as well. Um, we currently have a relationship with Reserve Bar where we're offering complimentary e-commerce onboarding for all of our gold and double gold award winning um, products. So if you enter into our 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 competition and you place, um, you automatically have that expansion onto um, one of the largest e-commerce platforms out there. So our team is making those connections as well. Um, events is a big one. Um, obviously, we're, brands are looking to get their products in front of, of both consumers as well as key folks within the trade. So we have made a focus this year um, to ensure that we are showcasing our um, double gold award winning products at, at the top events um, across the globe. So you'll find us at places like Tales of the Cocktail, Bar Convent Berlin. Um, we also have been um, frequenting some local wine and food festivals. So just ensuring that we're doing our due diligence and putting that that mark um, of approval on um, that our brands are receiving through our competitions all out throughout um, these these various events. Also, as well as um, as Toby mentioned, key connections. So brands are looking for um, those key connections that are are going to set them apart and really amplify their business. So whether that uh, whether that is um, a key distributor, if that is an exporter, a retailer, um, we have built out that network again alongside the Tasting Alliance advisors. So always making those connections. And then finally, press and media. Um, as Amanda Blue mentioned, um, there have been some awesome articles that have come out over the past few weeks as we've launched our um, results from the San Francisco World Spirits Competition. Um, so we are always pushing those award winning products through the press and media through many of those writers who are actually judges in our competition. Um, so any way that we can continue to fuel that support well beyond the competition, we are looking to do so through these various activations. All righty. And then if, Amy, if you wouldn't mind, we have one slide here that's, that's upcoming um, competitions. Great. Um, that's just a key highlight of, again, summing up all that we have in store. I know Maddie mentioned those key dates. We have those there, um, but also wanted to note that we um, will be sharing more details on Latin America um, and those shipping deadlines there. But Maddie, anything else you'd like to, to note on those upcoming competitions? We hope that you all enter. Um, well, they're, they're great competitions. And again, uh, depending on, on what you're looking for, if if you want a more localized craft centered competition, I highly recommend the New York competition. We, we focus on a lot of, of key bar and retailers here in the New York area. Um, it's, it's great exposure and, and local media as well. We do have our San Francisco World Spirits competition in 2025, which we will be opening up for this coming fall. Um, and deadlines for those will be updated on our website at thetastingalliance.com. That is our primary website. So you can find all relevant information, shipping deadlines, contact information, post-competition support, um, or just general winner info on, on tastingalliance.com. And, and if I can just say also, so we are, for everyone that's registered for this webinar, we're going to send out these dates uh, when we send out the recording as well. So you'll have them in multiple places. Um, so hopefully people will register. Um, hopefully consumers will take aware, um, take notice and, and, and you know, follow up on or follow your brands or the, or the winners of, of the competition. So we'll make sure that we get the word out as well. Great. I think we, sh we should just mention, since we were talking about events, our top shelf event in San Francisco, which I think there is a slide on, um, and we can talk a little bit about that. Uh, 
So Top Shelf event is something that we started uh, three years ago. We first had it in San Francisco as our gala, our awards gala. Uh, last year we had it at Resorts World in Las Vegas, and this year we're going to have it back in our hometown of San Francisco at the Intercontinental Hotel near the Moscone Center. Uh, we have 75 gold and double gold winning brands. Sorry, not even not not gold, but mostly just double gold and best in class winning brands. Um, they do not know that they are winners yet. They are have been uh, told that they are finalists. They are coming to present their. Uh, and pour their bottles to consumers and trade. Uh, and then there we have a big gala on the, that Sunday night where our actual winners are announced. We have various um, classes, master classes during that time and also a speed networking event. So brands that wanna sit down with Total Wine, Whole Foods, Park Street, Discus, um, uh, you know, retailers, importers, uh, marketing companies, PR companies um, are able to do so and sort of find out a little bit about how they could possibly work together. Um, we've got giveaways. Um, we have some really interesting uh, rare uh, pourings that are going to be offered. Oh. So um, we hope that you guys will be able to join us. And we have some um, some discus codes uh, to give uh, discounted tickets to attend. And that will be October 5th and 6th in San Francisco. Yes, and, I, and we're very excited that we're going to be there. So my yes. uh, colleague, Caleb Ross, is going to is going to be there. I might be there also, but I, we've got conflicting travel schedules. So we'll def Discus will definitely be there. And we're looking forward to supporting. And, and as uh, Amanda said, um, there are some discount codes. So please reach out if you have interest in that. And so, you know, I know we talked, so I know we talked, someone touched a little bit on um, post-competition support. Um, and I wonder if you all can share a little bit more about that because I know we're going to be working with you on on some of that post competition support. So um, is this now a good time to to shift to that, or is there anything else on the competitions that you all wanted to to share with folks? No, I think that the data that Discus can provide to brands that are just starting out, meaning um, you know destination distillery and all that stuff that that where brands can know which markets are, you know, the best ones for them to expand into and get that sort of access, also getting access to um, other large partners, retailers, large conglomerates um, is is really beneficial for for our entrance. So that's why we think this is a really important partnership. Um, and then Toby spoke a little bit about the post-competition support. So the Tasting Alliance Advisors okay. is a referral network where we will, um, after you've won a medal, we you uh, provide uh, some information to us and we sort of help you uh, get to the next step depending on where you're looking to go. And then we've got our events. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I just think that the landscape can be pretty daunting. Um, and once you win a medal, you sort of want to you want to be able to capitalize on that. So again, anything that has to do with the narrative of the brand, um, we can help tell that story. Um, there's also um, opportunities for uh, recruiting. Um, if you need to hire people, um, we have contacts there. Um, so it's it's really across the marketing and HR platform that we can be very helpful to brands that are that are starting to grow. And and I will say also, um, you know, as part of because as part of Discus membership, we do a lot of promotion, like I said, of the of the industry, but also of our members. Um, as Amanda mentioned, via Destination Distillery, but also um, just via the Discus social platforms, and we have as well connections and support that we can provide to to Discus members. Um, and so we're happy we're happy to do that, and that's one of the reasons why we wanted to. You know, connect with the uh, the tasting alliance and make sure that we get um, the idea of competitions out there even more, and really you know celebrate sort of the the partnership between um, the tasting alliance and and Discus. Um, so, are you guys? Do you guys have more slides? Are we? Are we? Should we go to questions? Since you've already touched on some of the support, I would like to just mention. You know, mm -hmm. you did talk about about competitions. There are a bunch of competitions out there. Um, why are competitions important? 
um, you know, depending on the competition, because every single one is different. Um, I can only talk about ours is that, you know, Toby talk, talked about a daunting marketplace for the brands. It's a daunting marketplace for the consumer as well. And uh, we are trying to distill, no pun intended, the um, the options down for you, for the consumer to be able to drink better, meaning to, you know, and it doesn't, that doesn't mean a higher price point. It doesn't mean that, you know, every single tequila that's $400 wins a gold medal. Sometimes it can be, you know, a $24 that wins be- best in class. And, and we are able to provide the consumer and trade with that so that they can be onboarded to bars on premise. Um, they will be, you know, able to get in front of people on the total wine uh, marketplace shelves um, because we have a, a relationship with them. Um, so competitions are not just about what you medal. They are about, you know, all the support that we provide afterwards. And um, uh, our website is shoppable as well. So um, consumers can go to our website after competitions, they can see, you know, what has won best in class and they can purchase right from our website. So we believe that we're, you know, the arbiter of taste in the spirit space and um, and we're offering a service to both trade and consumers. Yeah, Amanda, I'm so glad that you, um, you know, brought in the consumer angle too. And, and, and the last line you said about being the arbiter of taste, I think that's really important because I think, you know, unless if you're not, Maybe if you're like deep into the industry, you'll think, okay, yes, I'm going to go to competitions, but people Mm -hmm. might have the wrong sort of, may not have a broad enough view of competitions in terms of, okay, you know, if if you are maybe interested or becoming more serious um, about about the the spirits that you like, or you're interested in trying something innovative and new, um, that's another good reason why consumers should participate or might want to participate in in um in in the competitions. I and we do have a question in in the chat, so let me just read that from from Mike. Um, how do we get registered with Tasting Alliance to be a service provider to brands in helping with things like marketing, distribution, compliance, etc. Uh, they can reach out directly to me um, and we have a an e- email advisors at the tasting alliance dot com. Great. Um, and and uh, Mike, we're happy to connect you directly. Um, with with folks as well. Um, yeah, and so yeah, we're happy to maybe maybe connect you guys directly um, and also. Uh, we'll put that email address, Toby, that, that you gave, we'll put it in the sort of um, note with the recording that we send out to all registrants so that everyone will be able to connect with you all as well. Um, let's see, great. was there another? Oh, yes, Amanda, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying that that sounds great. Okay, we are all, we're, we're a very open door uh, company. We are, uh, we realize that this can be a large expense to to enter into a competition and we have you know we are a small team but we are a mighty team and we are there to help every step of the way from import to um shipping to uh you know what you do next uh so um i see how do we get more information on the event in guadalajara um again if you would just email me directly, I can send you um, a QR code and a discount code on how to enter that competition. Um, and, and Gary, so Amanda did put a, um, an email address. The, the, we've got two Amandas. One of the Amandas, Amanda Herbert put an email address in the chat, but um, Gary, we can connect you and Amanda Blue directly um, after this, if that's helpful. And there's yeah, the link. There's the link also in the chat. Okay, fantastic. So you've got the link, but um, if you need to be connected directly via email, then just, you know, put another note in the chat or we'll just go ahead and do it just to make sure everybody gets connected. I think that's that's the name of the game. Um, let's see. I don't, so I think, I, I don't think we have any more questions in the chat. I did have, um, you answered my uh, question about um consumers and we talked about support we've got the deadline here so that we can um so that everyone's planning ahead um okay well i don't th- th- i think if there's if there aren't any other questions i have a couple of um 
sort of last minute housekeeping things I want to I want to be able to say. Unless anybody has any other questions, you can either raise the hand, raise use the raise your hand icon, or um, like other folks have been doing, put them in the chat or in the Q and A chat part, and, and we'll get to those. Even as I you know give a couple of um, uh, last minute uh, reminders here. Um, so just if if like I said, we'll send out the recording to everybody who's on this chat. Um, one second, I feel like there's there's another question here. Uh, no, that we we connect um, Tasting Alliance Advisors is uh, for all brands that enter. Oh. Um, so the referral network is available to anyone that enters. Okay, great, fantastic. Um, oh, so it doesn't have to be just winners. It's, it's everyone who enters the competition. Everyone who enters the competition. And it's not just the San Francisco competition. It's the New York competition. It's... The so all, competitions. Competition, okay. all competitions offer that same level of support. Great, great. All right, <laughs> fantastic. Um, any other questions from anybody? Okay, well, if you do have questions, feel free to go ahead and raise your hand or, or put it in the chat. Um, so like I said, we're, we'll we'll send this recording out to everybody. You'll have the Tasting Alliance contact information. The recording will be posted to our YouTube channel, the Discus YouTube channel. And also, I just want to remind everyone of upcoming, um, we've got an upcoming Ask the Experts webinar. It's July 17th, the Environmental Protection Agency, EPA. Their Energy Star um, uh, unit will have a conversation about Energy Star and distilleries. Um, so we all know, I think we're probably all just as regular people, um, familiar with the energy star designation, especially on our refrigerators and stoves and whatnot, our, all of our household appliances. Um, well, last fall, um, EPA awarded energy star, energy star certification to, I think it was eight craft, eight distilleries, um, for the first time. And several of those were discus members, but they're going to talk a little bit about, um, the process. Um, about applying for Energy Star certification, but also the cost savings that can be included, that can be achieved, I should say, by um, by including energy efficiency in your in your operations. So um, we'll have speakers from uh, Brown Foreman from from EPA, and also from Brown Foreman and from Westland Distillery, which were two of the um, distilleries that won that were certified Energy Star um, last. Um, last fall. So hopefully you'll tune into those and, and we'll give you, we'll send you a link to those as well if you're interested in that. And I think with that, I don't see any other um, questions in the chat. Amanda, Toby, uh, Maddie or Amanda, do any last um, comments or, or suggestions that people think about besides make sure they go on the website and apply or register now? Is there anything else just, that folks uh, think about? Just email us if you have anything. We, like I said, we are, are a, a tiny but mighty team, and we get back to everybody. Yes, if there are any questions regarding the competition process, the entry process, please let us know if there are class codes that you would like to see that we do not currently have. Do not hesitate to contact me, and we'll see what we can do. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you, um, thank the you. Tasting Alliance team, for for joining us today and for sharing all this really great information. Um, I think so. This this concludes the webinar, and everybody may disconnect. <laughs>